two injuries uh, or two surgeries in the last really 48 hours. Gilbert Abinami, freshman D lineman, um, be out for the year, upper body surgery. Um, uh, Maverick MacGyver had surgery on his foot. All right, he'll be out an extended time. Not sure if it's season ending or not, but it'll be an extended amount of time. Um, potentially could be back in November. That's about all I know right now. So that's two updates. So what does that do? What does that do for your backup quarterback? Huh? Reduces it by one. Who's most likely to be that guy? Can't tell you today. So Jackson is putting enough. Jackson, Tyner's doing Jackson has good too. days. Jed has good days. They both need to. Uh, I think. Um, to me, you got to win win the backup job in terms of who can be most consistent on a daily basis. The red zone decision making, uh, the ability to move the offense. Uh, who gives us the best chance to win? Um, if we went to a number two quarterback. What, what is Jed? What is maybe held him back? what you have seen to achieving his potential. He just hasn't won it. He just hasn't won it. I, I, you know, you can't put your thumb on it. Hadn't won it outright. Um, Jackson's done enough good things to keep him in the mix. Mistakes um, by both. Um, good things by both. I mean, you can't really put your thumb on one thing. Uh, the addition of Ingram, what kind of led to that? When did that start developing? And what do you like about him at all for this team? Uh, Jamarcus entered the transfer portal I guess the last week in July or at some point. Um, we had several scholarships open uh, at that time and he contacted us and you know that's uh, that's a kid we're very familiar with obviously and he is a um, he's got good skills uh, he's got cover skills as a as a corner uh, but he's in a safety body so I think he's a combo type guy um, great great culture kid I mean uh, great worker Overachiever in every sense. Great kid, great young man, great addition to this program. Um, the players have welcomed him, you know, with open arms. The last 48 hours, they've been great. And um, he's a young man, you know, a junior. He's got two years eligibility. So, and all three grad school transfers on defense have two years. So that's a that's a bonus for all three of those guys. Since he's familiar with this defense, does he have a chance to just kind of slide right into that uh, spot? No, it'll be earned first and foremost, and he obviously knows a vast majority of the defense. We've changed, Coach P has changed a little bit, uh, some of the verbiage, but he will, uh, he'll need to win it. I'm sure it'll take a little bit of time, but um, when you say win it, and a lot, uh, I think there's a misconception that um, we have full-time starters that play all 90 snaps. That's not the case, and so I think it, it adds depth to the secondary. I think if he was playing safety, it allows you to play Fry. Um, at a nickel or a corner, if he's playing corner, allow, I mean, it gives you a lot of choices. And we, we've talked in spring a lot and summer about a lot of DBs that we like to train, cross train into multiple positions. And I think he's another guy that gives you that. Where is he conditioning wise? Um, two days pretty good so far. So he's a guy, obviously, with his familiarity with what y'all do, who could uh, be up to speed pretty quickly, you think? I think so. Be able to get to two years out of him, does that make him hit even an added bonus? A lot of grad transfers only get to come in for one year, obviously, but not only do you already know him, now you get to have him for two seasons going forward. Yeah, you know, three out of our six grad transfers are juniors, and you get those guys for uh, 18 months, basically. I think that is a major added bonus. It's very similar to signing a junior college kid. Although their advantage uh, when you're comparing them like that is that they've played major college football at programs uh, that have been successful, uh, similar to us, in ways that uh, that we want to add in. And, and again, I've said it multiple times. You want to add grand. We want to add grad transfers into our program that are coming from programs that I think are similar to us, because uh, the work ethic and the value and all the culture stuff that we're trying to create, you got to continue to do that with every kid you bring in this program. What are the biggest strides you've seen in Armand Shai? Well, first of all, he's kind of getting a lot healthier. He's just he's uh, he's kind of been banged up a little bit, but. And very normal in, in the middle uh, lack back half of training camp that we are. But Armand is uh, he runs behind his pads. He's thick. He's a one cut guy. Catches the ball extremely well out of the backfield. Uh, pretty good in protection. Continuing to learn our protections. But uh, he's a kid again that's played at a high level. Been very successful and um, he's a great kid. Does a, does a lot of things right. Are you guys looking for those grad transfers and they have two years left, or has it just worked out? Well? It's just kind of worked out that way. I think it's an added bonus. Uh, 
Back on Maverick for a second. What what day was it that he got hurt? Was that in practice? Uh, in scrimmages? Scrimmage Saturday. Scrimmage Saturday. Yeah. And it was a was it a fracture or what did he do? Uh, he had surgery today. Yeah. Um, a successful surgery. I'm told. Uh, uh, Uncle Marcus, how did you work through his legal issue up there at Utah State in yep. terms of your uh, decision on disciplinary action? Or You're talking about the disciplinary action from two years ago? Right, right. Uh, to get, kind of get back in the good graces of the, your, you and the team. Well, that was a that was a deal that was handled um, in court, off court. Um, was never charged with anything, and so anything that we did was was internal. So that's a long time ago. Yeah, wasn't charged. We talked about Eric. Uh, he's a comment how he kind of stacked good days on top of good days. Has anybody else kind of been able to step up in there and kind of do that? I think well? TJ's had a good couple days. Easy's had a good few days. Keyshawn's played well. Uh, McLean Mannix again is kind of back to healthy and full go. Xavier White and Rigdon have been there since training camp. Those guys are playing. With uh, I think at a high level and um, very confident. Uh, they're playing fast. Leggett is taking as many reps as, as easy. Uh, Leggett can play either outside receiver, a uh, really good special teams player. So I like where we're at right now with our wideouts. I think you said way back on the first day that you would normally play or maybe play last year three to six freshmen. Is that what you are still at? Is that what you're anticipating this year? I mean, how many guys do you feel comfortable saying right now that you know we're going to play this year, freshman-wise, true freshman-wise? I'd say here as we start the year, uh, Tony Bradford, Tyreek Matthews, Dadrian Taylor, Austin McNamara, Trey Cleveland, maybe. Probably where we're at right now. Eli uh, raved yesterday about Tony Bradford. What is it? TB. He's passionate. He's kind of a, a young football junkie. Comes from an extremely good high school football program that's been very successful. He's won at a high level. He he grinds. He knows how to work hard. He knows how to practice hard. He's got a really good motor. Short, maybe a little undersized, but uh, extremely good motor. I think Eli thinks he reminds him of himself because he's got a good motor, and so that's why he likes Tony because he plays really hard, chases the football. And I think when he signed, or when he was last year as a senior, he was listed like 240, 245. Now he'll have him listed about 270. What has his progression been like? It's been in terms of the weight gain, how is he, where, where is he now and how is he carrying? Just came, he just came in the summer and, and worked really hard, gained weight, knew he needed to gain weight, and he's carried it well. So that 270 is about where he is right now? Somewhere in there. Yeah. Maybe 65 to 70. Before you start game prep this weekend, well, we just talked about the wideouts. I think they're playing at a high level right now. Um, I like where our D-line is. Roderick Washington's had a tremendous camp. Uh, Nick McCann. Um, Quentin Yance has played well at times. Uh, Eli is, is uh, he's like the Energizer Bunny. I mean, that guy, he'll chase, chase the ball. Really good uh, pass rusher. Jordan Brooks is running the defense. He's playing really well right now. So I, I feel confident with those guys. Two more. Something you've mentioned at offensive line, defense back earlier, there's always the versatility. Is that something you can – everyone wants that kind of – it seems like you guys are at every position you really want versatility at multiple positions. Is that something you think can take the team just to an extra level or is it in case of injury? What, what is the main thought process? I, th I think both. I think um, we, we like that, but we force that. And we force that in training camp. We force it in spring ball. We make wideouts play different spots, both spots. Make DBs play different spots, O-line. Um, I, do, I do like the versatility, but I like it uh, when guys get banged up, injured, or not playing well. And you got to move guys around. And your next best guy may be the backup at a different position, but you can move him up in a position he's really comfortable, potentially move a veteran to another spot. And I think it, uh, you know, I think it helps your team. Since Coach uh, Randolph is supposed to speak with us here in a minute, tell me your background with him. What kind of brought him onto your staff? And I've known, yeah, I've known Paul Randolph. I think since maybe the early 2000s, so it's maybe 16, 17 years. And he was at Alabama uh, when I first met him. Brought him in at the University of Tulsa when KP Coach Patterson and I were, were on staff. We brought him in and he clinicked our staff. 
um, was the D-line coach at Alabama at that time, and just um, recruited the city of Dallas and the Metroplex when I was an assistant and ran into him quite a bit. Um, he coached at the University of Tulsa right when I was leaving, so we crossed in the middle of the night, and he came in that office and I was leaving. And so we've, we've, you've got a lot of familiar friends, and um, uh, obviously his, his uh, background with Coach Patterson at Tulsa, at Pitt, at Arizona State, um, and then now here, I guess it's the fourth school that they've been together, uh, made it for a, uh, again, another really easy transition. Great man, a great man of faith, um, is a leader of the D-line, is passionate, chases those guys to the ball, and every day the guy comes to work, he's a pro's pro. Um, we're very, very lucky to have Paul and stuff.